Hi humans and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the 10 most common mistakes I see so many spiritual entrepreneurs make and we're not missing a beat with these trainings so let's get right in. Number one, you are creating the offer you think people need rather than creating the offer you know people need and the solution here is market research. Market research simply means that you're hearing it from the horse's mouth. You are talking to enough people and you hear the same problem over and over and over and you're like man I need to freaking create a solution for this or there is a solution but I think I can do it better or I see somebody else doing it but I want to share with my own twist by the way disclaimer there is no such thing as the market is saturated I swear this is a limiting belief that keeps so many of us from actually launching our business to me when I see somebody who's launched something and they have a proven track record that it works that makes me want to do it even more because I know that there's an audience for it which leads me to this next thing if you're creating products and nobody's getting in, you don't have a business. Because in order for you to have a business, you have to be serving a certain population. It doesn't matter if it's free. It doesn't matter if it's paid. If nobody is showing up, then nobody is showing up. And honestly, I have seen so many people do this and then they hate their business. There's so much disconnection between them and their dharma. And actually, some people I see even give up on their mission and their purpose. They're like, nobody's paying attention. And it's not that nobody's paying attention. It's that you haven't nailed your ideal client which is number two number two is nailing your ideal client so many people miss this step because they feel like it's the past version of them but the past version of you five years ago or seven years ago is different than potentially what somebody is going through now and so yes there's going to be similarities but knowing your ideal client like the back of your hand is vital to your business the solution here is go and talk to people before i started my business i talked talk to so many people on a call in the DMs via email. I knew that there was a market for spiritual entrepreneurs. There weren't that many people doing it, so there wasn't much data, but I collected so much information from people across the board from all different industries that had a deep desire to be in business, but they wanted to do it in a way that felt honoring to them and their spirit. They so badly wanted to be in business, but in alignment with their higher calling. And so I raised my hand and I was like, okay, great. I'm the one that's going to create it. And so that can be you, which honestly is the third thing I want to talk about. The third thing is being first to a market. I think so often we get afraid of being the first person. I just talked about following other people who've done it before you and obviously you're not following exactly what they're doing but you're taking something that they've already done and you're giving it your own twist but there is something to be said about people who are first in their market. If you see that there is a need, go ahead and create the solution. There is this thing that holds us back where we feel like it hasn't been done yet, so I can't be the first one. I'm sorry, but that shit motivates me. If there's nobody in the market yet, be the first one because there will be no competition. There'll be no other person that people will have to go to but you, i.e. I created the Quantum U, the first BIPOC and LGBTQ in-person wellness entrepreneurial space. I looked and I realized, holy crap, like I need this space for myself. My students need this and I'm going to be first in the market. You will always be known to be the first in a market if you go ahead and you beat somebody to that. Number four, the price matters and you not charging what you actually really desire. Not based on what somebody can afford, but based on your mastery, based on all of the programs that you've taken, based on your time, your love and your energy that you've poured into this offer. If you don't give it that honor by attaching a number that is the energetic frequency and match to that, you're gonna create something that you may not like or that you may be disconnected. You may actually even bring in people, but you may look at the people and you're like, damn it, it's such a reminder that I've been disrespectful to my own spirit because I know that I shouldn't have charged that amount. And it's not about the money. It's not about charging $10,000 or charging $1. It's just about really understanding what feels honoring to your work. And no money shaming here, please, humans. Let's go beyond that, okay? There are so many different markets for so many beautiful people. And if you're a solopreneur, I really want to invite you to really ask yourself what is feeding your business and what is feeding your soul. We have free offerings and that just like really makes me feel happy and excited and know that I'm serving my community. And yes, we have offers that have a price on it. 
because it's feeding my business. And the more I'm well, the more I can do the thing that I'm doing, the more I can be of service to everybody else. It's as simple as that. Number five, chances are you're not serving the audience that you have. There is this beautiful thing that happens when we start our business and we're like, yep, we're going to start fresh. New page, new handle. And you actually may be missing people in your audience now. They may be your friends. They may be your coworkers. Honestly, those were my first clients. And I did the same thing. I discounted them. I was like, no, I need new people. I need new ideal clients, but chances are the people that you have in your network right now, you can be serving. And this is not just for newbies. Don't get it twisted. When you start to scale your business, you start to do the same thing. You start to focus on bringing in more people into your ecosystem and you forget to serve your audience. So this is just a beautiful reminder, human beings, to really serve the people that you have now. It doesn't matter if it's one person. It doesn't matter if it's a million people. The way you serve one person is the same way you're going to show up and serve a million. So start right now. Number six, hiring sooner. I see this all of the time with this mentality in entrepreneurship that when I do this, then I'll get over there. And when I make 10K, then I'll make this move. But then you become this conditional being that you need to see it to believe it. And business is not about that. Business is about innovation. Business is about you plucking something out of the fucking quantum field and feeling like, oh shit, I get to create this. So by definition, you are creating and molding a new reality. You're creating and bringing something new, something that's never existed in this life, hiring somebody sooner is so important to your business. And I know there's this mindset that how can I hire somebody? I don't have the money yet, but chances are you probably are in a position right now for you to offload just a few items to somebody on the internet who needs really a job, who would love to work with you, maybe even looks up to you, maybe even admires you, maybe wants to do exactly what you're doing, who sees the benefit in wanting to create something together. I think people really underestimate the power of like-minded people working together. There's nothing like having a bomb ass team who really truly believes in your mission. That person is going to work 10 times harder than the person that's just in it for the money. So please hire somebody sooner than later. Look at the greatest. Look at the people who you admire in business. They're not doing it alone. They have a strong team behind them. And the stronger the leader, the stronger the team. Number seven, one of my favorites, you feel like you need a website and you need an LLC to start your business. And no, uh, you don't need any of those two things. Let's start to break this down. Your website. If nobody is Googling your name and your website, chances are your website isn't going to make you money. So I would really encourage you to focus on your vision, your mission, hiring a team, perfecting your product, and doing client research. That's what's going to help you actually gain clients. You can go out and do and put a Google form or an application and just keep it simple. Notice that the website especially isn't something that people are out there Googling your name and landing on your page. Your website isn't making you money in the beginning. And that's just the honest truth. Let's cover the LLC. Do you need an LLC to start your business? So many people feel like they're doing something wrong, me included. I was like, oh my God, I'm doing something wrong. I'm illegal. No, you're not. You are a sole proprietor. The minute you decide to put your business out there and be in service, do you want to work towards being an LLC? Yes. I'm not an accountant. Go get some professional advice from an accountant and a bookkeeper on whether you need an LLC, whether you need an S Corp or whether you need an INC. I can explain that in another video, but that should not stop you from being in your business. You can start right now. Number eight, launching way too many things all at the same time. The solution here is to bring one product into the market and perfect it. Perfect one thing at a time. Instead of putting all of the things out there, it's like you lose steam. You lose momentum trying to do too many things. And sometimes it just comes out of this scarce energy of needing to be here and here and here and here. And then you actually don't like get anything off the ground. I am a fan of scaling one thing at a time. I scaled my business to six figures with one product to multiple six figures with two products. Today, yes, I can launch multiple things. But honey, don't get it twisted. We got about four people on our team, sometimes a little bit more if we end up hiring a copywriter and all of this stuff. I'm not the one that's doing it all by myself. I don't want to run a business all by myself. I would not have enough time. I would be probably stressed out. And honestly, I love what it feels like to have a team. I love connecting with other people who also share the same mission as me. And so don't forget the power of working with your team and don't forget the power of just 
focusing and doing one thing at a time. I think we got lost in entrepreneurship somehow, some way where we saw people putting up multiple offers all at the same time without actually realizing that there's a lot of people behind the scenes. And if it's coming from this energy of I need to sell this and I need to sell that and I need to bring in money, you're really not serving anybody. Here's a quick thing that I always tell people, whatever you have, you give it to people. And so when you have scarce energy, you also give that to people. So part of stepping into leadership is understanding that we need to be a clear channel, a clear vessel as much as we can. Number nine, this is a good one. Stop winging it, humans. You should be in business and have a business plan. And I know, I know, like us spiritual entrepreneurs don't want a plan because we're so led by our spirit and our intuition. And that will serve you in your business. I'm going to break that down so well. But you should not be in business without a plan. You really should know what's happening in your business this month, the next month, and the following month. At least three months, if not six months, work your way up to one year. What? Yes, I said one year of planning. Like, holy crap. Who can do that? I promise you, this is a muscle that you need to flex. When I first started my business, I too was the winged queen. And I was so excited that I got through the month and then I went through the next month. But ultimately, you cannot create a sustainable business and a business that actually makes you feel safe if you don't know what's happening. Which by the way, this don't confuse this for like needing to know, like I need to know what my business is doing. It doesn't come from that need. It just comes from the ability to know what's happening and that give you comfort so that you can relax and your alarms can go down. Chances are, if you don't have entrepreneurs in your family, this is fucking weird right like putting yourself out there not getting a paycheck i have not got a paycheck in four years some people cannot handle that because they just can't comprehend how will i make rent how will i pay for food i truly believe that all i have to do is always be in alignment to my mission my dharma and the thing that i'm supposed to be doing and that things will show up in my life but it took a long time to get there so give yourself grace have a plan whether it's a biz bestie whether it's a community whether it's a business business coach, you don't know what you don't know. I cannot even fathom being where I am without having somebody's guidance. Like it's just not possible. I have an athlete mentality. So like if I want to learn how to dive, like I'm not going to break my head and try to figure it out. Like I'm going to hire a diving coach. <laughs> I'm going to hire people to help me. And so that's part of the journey. Number 10, it's just putting yourself out there. You know, the hardest part is just taking the first step. Even in creating this video, I've been asking myself how Oh, and why has it taken you four years? What's the hardest part? And really, there wasn't anything that specifically was hard. It was just my mindset. It was me making something hard. And so check in with yourself and see if there's something that you're making hard. And this is the mindset piece of these 10 things. And see if there's a way that you can shift your mindset and shift your perspective and just do it. Like literally, just put the video out there with all of the flaws that you think it has. I look back at some of my old content and I fucking cringe. But it's all good because it is good. There is a tone and a message. There's something so beautiful. There is a gem in there. And that was what I was trying to communicate. So try as much as you can, humans, to not let the perfectionism of it needs to be this. I need to have a coach. I need to have a vision. I need to have a mission. Sometimes the best thing that you can do is just start. And you'll learn from there. There is no way of beating the algorithm. There is no way of putting a success bow on your business. It will be successful the more more you do it, the more reps you get in, the more you connect with your ideal client, the more content you put out there and you see what feels good and what doesn't. Again, not from a needy place, but from a place of truly expressing yourself, the more you'll start to land within your authority and with your leadership. And you'll really start to understand what is the message ultimately that you want to get out there. Well, humans, it's a wrap. Those are the 10 things. Watch the next episode and see you next time. Go with peace. Go with God.